We had the best time doing the initial breakdown of the body language and behavior in this video, and we decided we'd revisit some of our favorite moments from it. Sleep, I can't eat. I can't do anything but think about them. And uh, I just want to hug them so bad and tell them I love them. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, so right off the beginning of this, it might be true that she wants to hug them, she wants to do this, she wants to do that, but she's eye blocking. There is not a single bit of grief. There's no concern, nothing in the forehead. There's no snot, no tears. It's the worst kind of fake cry. It's a, Scott, I'm so sorry. You really don't like what I did. That's all it is. This is garbage. Chase, what do you got? Yeah, I agree with you. So this eye closure is not from the crying. This is exactly what you just said, Greg. This is avoidance. There's no movement here in the chin boss, which we always see when we see shame and, and grief. There's a hygienic gesture during the crying. And it's not to wipe tears, which is very unusual. So adjusting your hair while crying uh, doesn't look very good. So she's kind of just pushing her hair back there. That's what we call in the behavior business, a hygienic gesture. And she said, I just want to hug them. I just want to hug them so bad. There's a baton gesture she does with her hand as she's talking, her hands back here. Something that we always look for is things that don't line up. Scott talks about this in a lot of the other videos when a gesture doesn't really match up with a person's phrases. What I think is interesting here is that the gesture doesn't match up with anything that's going on. It doesn't match up emotionally with the tone of her voice or the cadence or the words that she's saying. So I, I would like to invent a new uh, a name for what we're seeing here where it doesn't match up with anything and just call it gesture arrhythmia. So, uh, okay, I, I called it uh, il il illustrator non-alignment or something like that. The word alignment in there for the illustrator. So it's close. Illustrating. Yep. Very I good. In the past. Yep. Yeah. I think this is uh, this gesture isn't associated with sadness or grief or loss or anything there. And that's all I got for this video. Mark, what do you see? Yep. So uh, I agree. There is what I would call incongruence. But, but I think you're talking about some extreme incongruence where it just doesn't really match up with ed anything. So uh, misalignment, arrhythmia, I think they're all good descriptions of that. Here's what jumps out at me. I, 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 them. I can't sleep. I can't eat. I can't do anything but think about them. Then the grooming that you were talking about there. I, them, them, I. I just want to hug them so bad. <laughs> And tell them I love. So there's way more eyes than them. They're, they're a, a, a collective. There's not even any names of the children. So it's very egocentric at this point. The male is very different from the female. Different rhythm going on, not joining in with this, this crying. You know, even if it is, you know, kind of fake, he's not even joining in. Not joining in with anything real or fake here. And I think he gives a sour taste in his mouth as well. So I think there is some strong differences between the male and the female here. Female here, very self-centered in the description there. And the grooming, uh, as you say, Chase, is just it's just not applicable in this situation at all. Uh, Scott, what do you got on this one? All right. She's moving really slow. This lets us know that she's, there's a lot going on up here. She's thinking through what she's going to say. She, she doesn't really, she's not really experiencing these emotions. So we're not seeing them on her face. She's, she's showing us what she thinks we, that we want to see or should be seeing at this point. When you compare Susan with her husband, do this throughout all these videos when he's in there too. Dramatic. I remember when this happened and I remember when she got busted or soon before she got busted because the, the we'll see a video. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that story when we get to that video because it's, it's, I, I'll never forget, I'll never forget that day. Um, and everything is based on feel sorry for me. It's all about me and, and, and just feel sorry for me. I, you're right, Mark, it's I, me. It's all about me at this point. And when you turn the sound off, as you'll see in all these videos, if you'll do this, she looks like she's retiring from a, a job somewhere, or she. It, these are the same faces you see and the same emotions you don't see that you're not seeing when someone's retiring or someone is um, leaving a job and they're telling everybody goodbye. That's what it looks like. It doesn't look like somebody who's grieving over their children. It, it, it doesn't look like that at all. The stress we're seeing is is when she's moving slow and not looking up the camera and not connecting with anyone. So these are all we're all we're seeing a bunch of stress on her 
rightfully so, because she's not telling the truth here, but she's sort of creating this. I, I think she had a pretty good idea of what she was going to say, but that was it. I don't think she rehearsed this at all when she get when it before it came down to uh, game time for showtime for. Her. All right, Scott, I disagree with one thing you said fully. What? There's a lot going on in her head. I disagree. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I stand corrected. I can't sleep. I can't eat. I can't do anything but think about them. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I just want to hug them so bad and tell them I love them. I want to say to my babies <laughs> that your mama loves you so much. And your daddy, these whole families love you so much. And you guys have got to be strong because you are, we, 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 I just know, I just feel in my heart that you're okay. But you got to take care of each other. And your mom and daddy are going to be right here waiting on you when you get home. I'm going to Actually, go first comment. on this one because it goes back to that video, uh, our last uh, video when I was telling you about uh, something happened. When this happened, when this video came out, there are two versions of this video. We, I couldn't. I spent all night last night looking for the second version of it. And it's a wider shot with everybody, and it's got family mem members and other people in it. And she's talking, her eyebrows are up. Look at everyone else. They show concern. Their eyebrows are down like this. They're they're thinking, oh my no, you know, oh my lord, what's happened? That's when my this is before we even had cell phones, you know, or before I had one anyway. My phone started ringing, and it was everybody I knew going, "Did you just see that on? Did you just see that on the news? Did you just see?" Uh, Susan Smith. I was like, yeah, we we're all like, holy smokes, man. She's going to the pokey because she did this. L at least look at her husband. That's really the only one you can see in here. Look at his eyebrows. That's what her should be doing, showing concern. She shows no concern. And again, this is all about her. The content is all focused on her, on me, on I. Listen to what she's saying. No brow, no brow movement in there. No no expressions really of anything. Nothing much moving at all. And there's no plea to the kidnapper. You know, and she's telling these little children, one of them is three and the other one is a year and a half. And she's saying, look, take care of each other. But you got to take care of each other. Really? Have you ever said that to a, 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 a three year old and, and the other one? You two take care of each other. Are you kidding me? If they saw it, you know, your mother's going to. Nah, she no, nah, she stepped in it here. So um, no anger, no nothing. We're seeing none of the emotions or expressions we should be seeing here. So that's a law, and her eye, especially with her eyebrows, they shouldn't be up, they should be down. She should be focused and telling whoever's got her children that they're gonna find them and, and they need to bring them back. That's what should be going on there. Okay, Chase, what do you got? Even, even better, I fully agree with that. She met this alleged person who did this. She spent time with this person face to face. Right. So that even makes it a worse case for the vanishing perpetrator. And what we're seeing here, there's showing of this more eye contact avoidant behavior, which is what she do, what she's doing. This is not avoiding to stop herself from crying at all. And I think it's interesting to note that she does this while she her eyes are staying at kind of five o'clock. So you can see where her eyes are looking uh, at a certain direction there, which suggests internal dialogue and not any emotion going on. And when does the chin boss move? It moves a couple of times here. It moves when she's talking about herself and how good she is as a mother. Your mama loves you so much. And while she's saying a lot of this stuff, we have lip licking. There's uh, right at the end here, lip licking, there's lip retraction. Lip licking is to make ourselves look better. Lip retraction is typically a need for reassurance right there at the end. And there's a complete lack of emotion. So I want you to go look and see what's missing here. If, if a person, if she had met and witnessed a person take her children, what's really missing from this conversation? What's being hidden? And this is what's being hidden from this is the perpetrator. So when there's data being hidden, that's a huge red flag. Should be for anybody. Uh, Greg, what do you think? Yeah, I'll take it a step further. She didn't just meet him. She described him, even had an artist draw a picture. And it was all BS. It was all made up. But here we see no grief, no concern. She stumbles through words because she's trying to think of what to say. Interestingly, Scott, you say her brows aren't down, they're up, but they're not even up. They're just flat. They're emotionless. That's even worse. If she was going like this or shock or something, we might feel good about it. The only time I see any concern in her brow at all is when she says, 
I know you are okay, and her brows do something odd. You get a little flash of something right between her brows because she knows he isn't. Now, we often will talk about lip licking and that, but Desmond Morris talked about something called a tongue jet, and he said it's baby's first way to reject something or something distasteful to push out. We're going to see her do the Morris tongue jet, not just this time, but other times too. When she talks about your mama and your daddy, and she goes, like that, that's a that's a Morse tongue jut all day. And your mom and dad are gonna be right here waiting on you when you get home. Then she bites her lip as she draws it back in. And I think that might be containment or an adapter. This is ugly. This is, there's nothing good in anything she's doing. And to your point, Scott, the husband looks just like he's out of touch with everything. Now he's also, they're estranged before she does this. One thing you should know is they believe that the reason she disposed of her children is because somebody she had had an affair or at least a starting relationship with didn't want children. Sound familiar? Mark, what do you got? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll tell you what's missing for me, uh, Chase, and, you know, whatever's missing for all of you, and, you know, put it down there. But um, it's all eye block, as far as I can see. So there's zero, from this angle, for me, there's zero eye contact with that potential audience who might have information on where her kid is. You know, I would expect, and if it were me, you know, to be making a lot of eye contact with the public and trying to get information across is, here's who we're looking for, and if you know anything, all of those standard things, I'm getting none of that. Um, yeah, the lip licking, the biting as well. It, they're very out of the ordinary for what we saw from her before. So they kind of come out of nowhere. That rings alarm bells. It's around when you get home. So there's something about that that push on when you get home and the lip bite there. That's alarming for me as well. Biggest alarming thing for me is when I usually see, uh, you know, a couple or a mother or a father or any kind of, you know, primary caregiver who is in this situation, the emotions collide. It's quite complex. There's a lot going on because they're trying to get information across as well. They've got the job of trying to contact the audience. They've got this job of trying to hold themselves together while doing that. Their mind is in a thousand places trying to understand what might be happening with this kid here you know, regardless of what emotion she's doing or isn't doing, it's super simple what's going on. It's too simple as far as I'm concerned. Now, often what we get is with this collision of emotions, it's quite complex and, and often observers will look at it and go, oh, there's something up there. There's something up because it's not easily understandable. I usually expect it to not be easily understandable because this is a situation that no human being on the planet has rehearsed for. They haven't had that moment of, well, you know what? When my kids go missing, here's how I'll handle my feelings. Here's how I'll understand this situation. Well, she's handling herself in a very simplistic way here. That rings alarm bells for me. Uh, that's all I got on that one. Have we all, we all been? Yeah. Yep. Good. I want to say to my babies, that your mama loves you so much and your daddy these whole families love you so much and you guys have got to be strong because you are we, 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 I just know I just feel in my heart that you're okay but you got to take care of each other and your mom and daddy are going to be right here waiting on you when you get home this is close to the investigation, Susan, uh, have told NBC News that federal agents are focusing, in fact, on the relationship between you and Mitchell Sinclair, the, the man that you were going to visit that night, the man you said you were going to visit with your children. Uh, they've told NBC that there were inconsistencies in your stories. Do you know what inconsistencies uh, they were referring to? Uh, no, ma'am, I really do not know that. Um... All right, Chase, what do you got? Yeah, we see her stop herself from smiling here, which is pretty unusual. There is some pucker, some lip compression. There's licking. Uh, there's lip retraction going on here, which suggests all kinds of crap. But one thing I really want to pick on is watch her blink rate from before she hears the word relationship when she actually learns what the question is about. 
and watch the change in blink rate before the word relationship and then after the word relationship. And you will see a perfect example of what we always talk about. Federal agents are focusing, in fact, on the relationship between you and Mitchell Sinclair, the, the man that you were going to visit that night, the man you said you were going to visit with your children. And there's also some hesitancy here. There's this qualifier where she uses the word really in the middle of her denial. No, ma'am, I really do not know that. There's a non-contraction, but please keep in mind, uh, we just saw an example of her most likely being truthful with a non-contraction. <clears throat> And there's also some double access to internal dialogue to craft an answer. And that would mean that there's accessing to internal dialogue, remaking eye contact, and then going back down again in quick succession, uh, which is also a pretty large red flag. And we know this is deceptive already, so I'll give my answer at 100%. How about that? <laughs> Scott, what do you think? All right. I thought when she said... Um, do you know what inconsistencies, what what inconsistencies were made or whatever? I thought she was going to say, "Do you know what inconsistencies means?" Yeah, hey, God, and I laughed so hard after that because I thought she was talking down to her. Anyway, at the top we see her lips. You're right, Chase. We see lip pursing. We see retraction. We see all kinds of things in there because what she's talking about. She's she's she, it, it's catching her a little bit off guard because she brings up the guy she's seeing. She want to hear about that. But at the same right before that, she says something that makes her that is like, yeah, it makes her feel like, you know, that's OK, because she smiles at that point. It's not duping delight because at that point she's not saying anything where she's duping anybody. But we're, we're, there's a whole lot going on there. So and especially when she gets back to the to the the part about the guy she's going to see. Watch there, because we see full on a lip pursing there, and that and that indicates that the per, that that person is um, doesn't agree with what's being said, and she sees it as a threat. Also, when you see her eyes darting around, that indicates the person is going through and um, processing the threat, processing whatever's being said, and getting and getting ready to, to as they structure their answer for that threat. That's what we're looking at there. Um, that's that's all I got on that one, Greg. What do you got? Yeah, that eye pro that eye movement can mean that she is processing information. It can also mean that she is looking for an answer to something that she doesn't have. I mean, it's, she's prepared for all this stuff, and she's probably got something she wants to say. There's also a high likelihood in her case that she can't hold a thought long enough to answer that question. Because if you watch how she behaves, she rambles and does whatever, and then throws out something. Here's what's interesting. She's a low horsepower romancer because most romancers, when they look at you, they make really good eye contact. She'll say something and make really quick eye contact and then break away again. Probably something that's a learned behavior. She was in an abusive childhood and that kind of thing. So there's probably some of that not making really solid eye contact. Um, but that actual smile that she tries to hide is when she's thinking about this relationship or something comes up and then she breaks eye contact and does that tongue jut again. Is she going into memory? Is there something going on? Because then her blink rate goes through the roof, her breathing goes up, and she does that nervous confirming nod about the guy. So it makes me think she's got some kind of positive thing going on in her head about the guy, but then realizes, uh oh, uh -oh that was the wrong thing to do. Makes quick eye contact and does the, the nod. She does the mouth grooming, and when she says, no, ma'am, her brows flash. No, ma'am, I really do not know that. We only see this eyebrow flash when she is doing something that's negative so far, as far as I can tell. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so I agree. There is a complexity of emotions happening here, which she hasn't rehearsed for delivering or controlling in any way. So I think this idea of the boyfriend uh, that comes up and and it is a, a real emotion that comes with that and she doesn't know what to do with that and she suppresses that delight and it would be so easy to go to see that as Jupiter's delight but scott you're absolutely right this is not Jupiter's delight because it's the suppression of a real feeling of her imagining her boyfriend and she hasn't she hadn't prepared for this question in any way so there's this huge kind of collision in many ways uh, you know this is her being very real 
with us because she's not good when not rehearsed of being simple enough and controlling her feelings. So we get that suppression of delight and then she lets it out. She hasn't fully managed to suppress it. We get the lip lick. There's a lot of swallowing goes on there. Um, Non-contractions, polite as well. So some elements that we've seen before. Uh, Yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that one. Sources close to the investigation, Susan, uh, have told NBC News that federal agents are focusing, in fact, on the relationship between you and Mitchell Sinclair, the, the man that you were going to visit that night, the man you said you were going to visit with your children. Uh, they've told NBC that there were inconsistencies in your stories. Do you know what inconsistencies uh, they were referring to? Uh, no, ma'am, I really do not know that. Um- Right now, we want to go to Union to get the story firsthand from Susan Smith and her husband, David. Susan, how are you doing this morning? Uh, doing okay. Uh, very little sleep last night, but I'm okay. There was uh, some news yesterday and, and some promising leads uh, in this case. Uh, how, are, how are you coping with the disappointment of the news from yesterday? Um, it was... Um I was running around uh, my house yesterday morning all excited. I really thought that they had, uh, had, had really found something that was, uh, I really thought they had found one of my children. And um, when I got to the courthouse and found out that the lead had uh, disintegrated or when there was nothing there, I was very devastated, very disappointed. Uh, got my hopes up and was let down, but uh, I haven't given up hope. I, you know, that was, uh, maybe one of many disappointments, but maybe that's going to uh, be be right. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so she's very focused on her feelings, and I'll go through those in a moment. But I want to give a well, not some credit, but but put it in the context of there's two pretty bad questions that come forward in this. The first one is, how are you doing? So the interviewer has asked for her uh, emotion. So we could kind of go, well, of course, she's going to give her feelings because that's what she was asked. And I'll come to that in a moment. And then he goes, well, how are you coping with the disappointment? So he even delivers her a feeling to attach to. I would say terrible interviewing there unless you want to lead somebody into stating those emotions now of course she does she says very little sleep excited devastated disappointed so she lays in what she's been asked for hopes up let down many disappointments and she kind of ends on on that so she's been a little bit led on that Now, having said all of that, what I do notice in uh, interviews with people who are not the culprit, the perpetrator, the criminal in this sense, is you can lead them into emotions and they instantly go to, uh, you know, they, they don't necessarily say this is not about me, but they take it off them and they naturally get onto uh, find my kids. They will get onto the kids immediately. She doesn't find her way there. She is led into her feelings and being self-centered. So there is that going for her, but she should be able to find her way out of that. And she doesn't. Greg, what do you got on this one? Yeah, let's talk about leading her into something. When you see her left eye accessing this time, that's not her making up something. That's her repeating a word she has heard. Disintegrate is not a word she uses. That's a word that, that one of the investigators said, oh, oh, that lead disintegrated. That's the way they got her in to talk to her, just about guaranteed. Look at her, this is where I'm talking about she's braced. She's in a fighting position. By that I mean, when you're in the army, you dig a hole, you get in there, you get your rifle and you defend yourself. She's braced, she's locked back in the chair, she's barriered. She's got what I call egg protector. In men, we call it the fig leaf. We, cr- we cross our primary sex organs. She's crossed her arm in front of her abdomen and she's locked down with her husband there and she's twitching fingers and doing all kinds of adapters. Her blink rate is through the roof and she's braced for whatever you're going to ask her. She's ready for this whole thing. She gets pressure and she does something we've only seen one other time on the entire behavior panel sh- show and that's she does this pressured release of words at the end she's feeling pressure she rambles and when she's done she didn't edit so she's got words left over that mean nothing you know that was 
uh, maybe one of many disappointments, but maybe that's going to uh, be be right. Something is wrong right there. Be right with those leftover words. Something's wrong. She had a plan what she was going to say and it didn't come out correctly. She tries to redirect. And if you look and you really want to think about what would a person like this look like, they wouldn't be pushed back against the chair if they've been through all this trauma. They would look like him. He's shocky. You can see his brain can't comprehend what's going on. Never mind the TV camera might be part of it, but she has none of that. It's all just her. It's all just her telling whatever story she came there for. And the only place we see it's that pressure in the end and her using the wrong words. Uh, Chase, what do you got? Yeah, so I think uh, she starts this video off in stress. Her respirations at around 20 to 23. Her blink rate is at around 60. And keep in mind, the average blink rate is like 13, 15, somewhere in there. Everybody's a little different. Her, she uses a three o'clock eye movement to answer this question. So her eyes go to your three o'clock as you're watching it, which is her baseline. So that's her baseline. She's probably genuinely recalling how she feels for just a moment here. But I think her thumb is a great reliable indicator and she's using her thumb as a pacifier a little bit with her husband but what the the biggest red flag in this entire interview in its entirety is her saying i think they they might have found one of my children i really thought they found one of my children her just saying that is a huge indicator that this is something is way off in this and then there's a uh super increase in blink rate right when she says one of my children i think she either realized she made a mistake or that topic alone caused her some stress uh, you can decide that but there's some internal dialogue where her eyes are going down this direction to describe her uh, disappointment but i think what's interesting to see the whole picture here is that this is a woman hoping her children are never found, trying to show excitement for children being found, and then disappointment that they were not found at the same time. So there's a whole lot going on, and we're seeing a lot of mixed emotions. I think that's one of the reasons we're seeing a lot of this strange, unusual behavior going on here, because I think the husband here uh, might still be a little hopeful, and might still be a little scared or might be starting to suspect the person sitting beside him, which is another reason for him to be frozen still in this video. Uh, Mark, what do you got? Uh, I went. Uh, good. Be, that was a uh, test. You let's pass. <laughs> let's be Scott, uh, I think. Scott, what do you <laughs> got? be me. All right. Uh, let's take a look at her thumbs. We're in this, her thumb. She's, she's over there and that. She's adapting like a, you know what, on that guy, man. Just pulling her hand and pulling his hand and, and squeezing it and doing her thumb up and down. That's an adapter. She's trying to get rid of that built up stress or tension she's feeling at that time. And she's under a lot of stress. And we know that because she's really still. She looks like somebody just walked in and said, what are you doing? She's like, what? Nothing. What are you doing? And she's in the middle of doing something she shouldn't be doing. You're right. Her blink rate is high. It goes through there and starts to tick, 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 tick. I just did a Greg. But her, her blink rate goes way up. So she's under attack and she's feeling that threat. That's another reason she's really, really still. Um, that's, that odd smile at the top, that's, she, she doesn't know that's not the thing to do. Uh, that's why we're seeing that. And this in this video, we're seeing her, her nostrils are flared uh, more than any other video up to this point. I mean, they're almost the whole time they're wide open, taking in that oxygen, her fight or flight's on because she's under attack. And she, and she knows that. So all these things we're talking about here, we're seeing all the distress. She's extremely stressed at this point. And when she starts talking about uh, hoping the children are okay and they find at least one and all that, that she, I think that's dawning on her as it's coming out that that's, that's odd to be, to be talking like that. And I agree with you, Chase. You're seeing a lot of things going on uh, about what she's thinking right there. She's thinking about one thing as she's talking about something else, but trying to make it look like something else. That's, uh, that's a great find. But all that leads to stress. So we're, we're just seeing somebody. If you want to see somebody under a lot of stress, take a look at her at this point. All right. Just keep watching. Yeah. Right now, we want to go to Union to get the story firsthand from Susan Smith and her husband, David. Susan, how are you doing this morning? Uh, doing okay. Uh, very little sleep last night, but I'm okay. There was uh, some news yesterday and, and some promising leads uh, in this case. 
Uh, how are how are you coping with the disappointment of the news from yesterday? Um, it was. Um I was running around uh, my house yesterday morning all excited. I really thought that they had, uh, had, had really found something that was, uh, I really thought they had found one of my children. And um, when I got to the courthouse and found out that the lead had uh, disintegrated or when there was nothing there, I was very devastated, very disappointed. Uh, got my hopes up and was let down, but uh, I haven't given up hope. I, you know, that was, uh, maybe one of many disappointments, but maybe the next gonna uh, be be right. David, the question that that arises in, in people who have been following this so closely, and, and certainly you have to know how much emotion that this is, has generated across the country, is why someone who would uh, be interested in, in, in carjacking or, or stealing a car would want to continue to, to take a couple of little kids with them. Have, have you been able to fathom that or, or could you think of why someone would want to kidnap a couple of little kids and, unless there was some ransom or something involved? No, I have no idea why the suspect has why he even took the children and why he has not released them yet. We have no knowledge whatsoever. Right. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hang on a second. I was going to do it, man. All right. <laughs> Still going to do it. All right, Chase, what do you got? All right, Greg, what do you got? <laughs> or Mark, what do you got? <laughs> She's going to pass out if she keeps this interview up. She's in a place where her respiration is fluttering now. You can't miss it. I mean, you watch her, her her breathing rate. I didn't count, but I'm going to guess it's somewhere around 40. That's pretty fast. It might even be higher than that. Chase, you probably counted. She's licking. She's grooming her mouth. All this stress is now caught up with her. Her eyes are down, down to the right, and then back up. And then when he says, my favorite in the whole thing, and I'll leave it at that, when he says, well, we don't know. Her mouth moves. We have no knowledge whatsoever. Children, if you have a child and you don't teach them not to, when they color, they'll go. Because when we're thinking and working out something, we move our mouths. Mammals do. It's just what we do. Horses do it. Dogs, all, all of us move our mouths a lot. But humans, when they're little children, will do it all the time. And I think that's leakage in her case of, well, maybe. I think she's trying to figure out what she's going to say to make that w come to the next level. If she were in a chair, I think we'd see pre-confession movement. She would start changing her body style here. Uh, Scott, what do you got? I got 10 bucks that says somebody's going to make a gif of you doing that with your mouth a second ago. <laughs> I think within a week we'll be on Instagram. You may want to take I bets on that. I know where you that. live. I'll go to, I'll go to I 50 bucks. I know where you live. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Anyway, so that's if somebody happen. shows up at your house with a chain and drags your traverse around, it wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, Amber would tell you, and so go out and get something else. <laughs> so uh, at this at this point, I think her fight or flight is it's the highest it's been so far. She's panicking as this guy's talking because she's thinking, is he going to say something's going to get me in trouble? Is he going to say something something that that I'm not ready for that I can't defend at this point? Her blink rate is through the roof. And her nostrils are flared again. We say that one more time. I think her spider flights through the roof. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, I think you're right. I, I think we actually see her ramp up in this. I mean, she starts pretty high and she goes up higher. And I think it's because her, her partner here, I guess it's her husband, um, uh, really starts kneading into her, her muscle tissue there uh, because he is not prepared for this at all. He's in high anxiety. That is a strong signal for her. She, I think, is now going, well, this guy's out of control. So just as you said there, Scott, what's he going to say? Is he reliable? And I think her breathing rate ramps up even further at, at that moment there. So always great to see the combinations that happen, not just focus on one individual, but how's the partnership working? Uh, just as I think it was Scott that was saying earlier, you know, that in that video um, that I don't think we can see, but he was saying, look, you know, if you look around the subject, you get to understand the subject. Look at the partnership that's happening here to understand the subject. Chase, what do you got on this one? Yeah, I love that. So let's really quickly touch on nostril flaring or wing dilation, as we call it. 
we have an adrenaline spike that produces an, a, an equally high demand for oxygen. And when you're trying to conceal your need for oxygen, because most of us would just open our mouth and openly breathe bigger. But when we're trying to conceal it, we use the nostril flaring unconsciously. Our brain just says, okay, dilate the nostrils. If you're trying to keep your mouth shut to oxygenate the blood going to the brain uh, primarily. I like that the perpetrator appears. The husband is asked, and now there's a perpetrator. We even hear the word suspect, which is great. And he's using his wife as a pacifier uh, throughout this thing. You can see him just kind of going crazy. And she, I think she's stroking his hand to help calm him down and just kind of get him ready. Just remember what we talked about. And just kind of just go right along what we talked about. But I think there's a strong drop of the thumb of her thumb onto his hand at the end of his statement, right when he's saying uh, no knowledge whatsoever. We have no knowledge whatsoever. But you're right. The, the blink rate and breathing spikes as he begins. So we actually, in this clip, we're not seeing it super high. We're seeing it spike from the beginning. So we're getting to see it escalate. So you'll be able to see that and kind of train your brain to see that in your everyday life uh, using this video as well. That's all I got. David, the question that that arises in, in people who have been following this so closely, and, and certainly you have to know how much emotion that this is, has generated across the country, is why someone who would uh, be interested in, in, in carjacking or, or stealing a car would want to continue to, to take a couple of little kids with them. Have, have you been able to fathom that or... Or could you think of why someone would want to kidnap a couple of little kids and, unless there was some ransom or something involved? No, I have no idea why the suspect has, why he even took the children and why he has not released them yet. We have no knowledge whatsoever. So what do you got?